Welcome back to Helicopter Lessons in 10 Minutes or Less. Once again, it's Jacob here, and this video's topic of discussion will be auto rotations. Now, this subject has a lot of extensive information, techniques, etc., but for the purposes of this video, I want to break it down to the most basic level. From there, I'll work on a follow up video expanding more on things like uh, individual pilot techniques, external factors, auto rotations with turns, um, etc. But that being said, let's get started with just the basics. So, what exactly is an auto rotation? An auto rotation is a condition where the rotor blades are being driven by an upwards flow of air rather than by engine power. The blades rotate automatically. Now why is that important? Well it gives a helicopter pilot the ability to have a controlled glide to the ground if an engine does fail. So let's see what the stages of an auto rotation would look like. Alright, here we have a helicopter in forward flight. Say he's flying along at uh, 500 feet AGL and direction of flight is just straight and level. Um, at this point, the engines uh, turn the blades enough to overcome the drag so that lift can overcome weight and the helicopter is able to maintain uh, level flight. While in level flight, level powered flight, uh, the airflow coming through the disc is downwards through the disc. Now let's see an engine failure. The pilot is going to um, instinctively lower the collective in order to uh, enter an auto rotative state maintaining NR uh, or your rotor RPM by uh, adjusting that collective. So now we see the entry into an auto rotative state looking something like this. We've lowered the collective and so now we're beginning to change our direction of flight down and now the rotor is having an upwards flow of air rather than a downwards flow of air. Uh, the helicopter is in entering an auto rotative state at this point. Uh, from here, obviously we're coming closer and closer to the ground. Uh, but we'll label this next phase the descent phase, where during this phase, uh, the pilot is focus on, uh, focusing on looking for a place to put the helicopter down on the ground safely. He's cross-monitoring his instruments to see his rotor RPM, his airspeed, attitude, uh, just making sure everything is appropriate for the conditions, but developing a good cross-check so he can monitor this autorotational glide to the ground. Now, at some point, as we get closer and closer to the ground, we don't want to maintain the same... Uh, direction of flight the same rate of descent towards the ground and so we want to arrest it. How do we do that? We do that with a flare. Uh, a flare is going to trade off all of this airspeed for a reduction in your rate of descent uh, closer to the ground. This is done with aft cyclic usually about say 100 feet above the ground uh, but this is dependent on the helicopter, the density altitude, the weight, etc. But the purpose is to level off the flight path trajectory um, and to stop the rate of descent prior to termination. So what does that look like? The helicopter begins to pitch up and the direction of flight begins to level off and become more so parallel or an attempt to become parallel to the, 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 the ground surface. Um, once again, the purpose of this is just to stop that rate of descent prior to termination. And we don't always get a pick where our engine uh, fails, so in a lot of cases we're, we're having to execute this maneuver to say an open field or you know, an unimproved area, so we want to reduce a lot of that forward motion prior to touching the ground so that we don't have any kind of rolling motion once we're on the ground. Now, as the helicopter begins to settle at the end of this flare, the pilot is going to cushion with a collective application as the helicopter touches down. So when executed uh, correctly, this whole uh, maneuver looks like the helicopter touching down with relatively zero forward airspeed, uh, relatively low rate of descent, and you've turned an engine failure at altitude into a safe touchdown instead of a crash sequence. So once again, these phases, we had level flight, the entry into the auto rotation, immediately dropping that collective down, changing the airflow from a downwards flow to an upwards flow. We have the descent phase where we're cross-checking all of our instrumentation to make sure we are in a steady state auto rotation. Prior to uh, the ground, we're going to initiate a flare to stop that rate of descent and then termination of the maneuver with a collective application to reduce or cushion uh, there at the bottom. Now, during that auto rotation, there's a, a change in the aerodynamic characteristics of your rotor disc. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So if that's our rotor disc, counterclockwise, it's going to be broken down in a few different regions. So what that looks like, it's going to be something like this. Alright, so our stall region is going to be this closest region towards the mass 
It's going to be about roughly 25% of your blade radius area closest to the mass. And just as the name implies, it's stalling airflow. So the, the airfoil is operating above the critical angle and is stalling. So that's very turbulent air. It's not really doing much for you. This next region is going to be your driving region. And that's going to take place at roughly 25% to 70% of your blade radius area. And this is what's, uh, what's driving your rotor. So the rotor is extracting the energy from the upwards flow of air. And this region generates rotor RPM. It's increasing uh, your rotor's RPM as you descend through the sky. This last region, just because we had a driving, we got to have a driven. Uh, this driven region is the area being driven by the driving region. It's the lift producing area of the blade. It's absorbing the rotor RPM in order to, you know, have that auto rotational descent, that glide characteristic. Uh, and this is going to be taking place in, say, the last 30% of your blade radius area. All right, so this diagram outlines what it looks like with zero airspeed, but obviously it's going to change slightly if you're in forward airspeed. So it changes just a little bit. Here's our uh, rotor disc direction of travel, and everything is just going to shift slightly towards your, uh, um, your retreating blade. So your stall region is going to increase and your driving and driven region are going to decrease closer to your retreating, uh, your retreating side of the blade. And this is just due to the lower angle of attack. But luckily we have blade flapping, cyclic feathering that compensate for this dissymmetry of lift. Um, and if you have any questions about that, I have an entire video just outlining that compensation. I'll put that in the description as well as a little link that should pop up in the video now. All right. Uh, well, that wraps up the basics of an auto rotation. Much of this material is outlined uh, more in depth in the book Cyclic and Collective. I'd recommend checking that out if you're looking to continue your professional education. I definitely pull a lot of material from that book and put it in a lot of my videos, but I'll put that link in the description uh, of this video if you're interested in that. But from now, I'd like to hear what you guys and gals have to say. You know, share your thoughts, your techniques, your tips, tricks, and questions in the comment section below. And, uh, you know, let's make this a conversation. Let me hear what you have to say, and I'll take a lot of that information and put that into an advanced auto rotations uh, video at a later date. But once again, thanks for watching. Uh, this is Helicopter Lessons in 10 Minutes or Less. I'm Jacob, and as always, safe flying.